Well, hey there, everybody. I am super excited for this particular versus episode of Gideon's Tactical. We have Ontario versus SE large fixed blade survival knives, the Ontario RTAC 2 and the SE Hungulus. We're going to do just a side by side today as well as some field testing. You'll see a bunch of stuff uh, and see which one, you know, excels at certain things, uh, pros and cons of each because they both have pros and cons of each, obviously. Uh, Ontario worked with Randall's Adventure Training and they made all the original Rat, you know, 3, Rat 5, Rat 7 and the RTAC 2 and RTAC 1, uh, and then they had a splitting of the ways and Randall's Adventure Training went and started SE, uh, and they basically just uh, to fine tuned all of the old rat models, made them a little bit better, a little bit higher quality, and uh, the Hungalus is basically the son of the RTAC 2. RTAC 2 came first in the generations of large fixed blades like this, and then uh, the uh, SE Hungalus came second. So let's get out here. Let's begin to compare these blades and uh, see the pros and cons of each. All right, so one of the main things that's going to determine a purchase for you and a lot of the differences with these two knives, because they weigh the same, you know, there's a lot of the same things that uh, make up the SE Hungalus and the RTAC 2 is going to be the fit and finish. And what that means is basically the finish on the steel and then the fitting of the handles. Because when you look at this, you're looking at the RTAC 2 and you can see that the finish is by no means as good a quality. It's already scuffed off the whole upper part of this blade right here. And these have both seen about the same amount of uh, work. So you can see it's coming off already right there. You know, just a lot of wear on that finish pretty quick. Whereas with the Hungalus, there is literally just some wood residue on this finish. This finish is not worn off at all. Over years and years of use, that will happen. But, uh, I mean, you know, these have seen about the same amount of use, about a month of hard use each. And they have not. Um, the Hungalus definitely is maintaining its finish a lot better than your RTAC 2. The other thing is the fit. The handle scales on the Hungalus are really nice and machined in, really perfect. Just r no edge you know showing or you know offset either way just really well machined in and fit well to your handle uh, are the micarta handle scales whereas on your RTAC 2 it, it fits really nice you know they're centered they're not offset or anything machined really well along the back but along the handle right here you can see there's this little lip on either side of the micarta that has been raised this whole length from basically here to here just slightly above the tang of the knife so I can run my nail along that on either side it's about half a millimeter on the handle of the RTAC 2 and you will get that a lot with Ontario knives uh, that they will their their quality controls definitely gone up in the sense that they used to be really offset the handle scales a lot of the time and really bad you know like I'm talking a whole millimeter um, you know uh, raised up above the steel. This one's about half a millimeter. It's machined really well, and the grinding angle as well is perfect on the RTAC 2. Uh, but that is something that you are going to see a lot more often on a on a um, Ontario knife than you would on the SE knife. So that's something to consider is both the fit and finish. Fit and finish doesn't really matter to me as long as the handle scales line up pretty well. Uh, but for a lot of you out there, you're going to want to have, particularly if you're in humid environments, because these are both high carbons, you're going to want really good coating that's going to last a really long time that you're not going to have to worry about rust and then for some of you are just OCD and you really want to have those micarta handle scales perfectly aligned you're going to get that every time with the SE where it's kind of hit or miss with the RTAC. All right, let's talk about the actual blades on these knives. The RTAC 2 has an actual cutting edge of 10 inches even, and the Hungalus has a cutting edge of 9.75. So you're going to get a quarter inch longer blade with your RTAC 2 than you would with your Hungalus. Not a big deal. It doesn't really matter to me at all. With the Hungalus, you get a high saber grind. In other words, it's flat till right below those numbers. And then the grind goes down to the edge, so you get this kind of little flat spot up here along the whole spine. Doesn't really do anything, uh, you know. Pros or cons. I'm I'm very neutral about that. It will help out with those of you who like uh, clamp style sharpeners, like a Lansky kit or uh, even an Edge Pro Apex. That little flat area will help you with some of your sharpening. And then a full flat grind on the RTAC 2, just from right here whoosh, all the way straight down to the edge. The steels that these two blades are made out of the 
Hungalus is made out of 1095. We have no Rockwell harness on it that is mentioned on the website uh, by Essie. So I don't know the Rockwell hardness for the R uh, excuse me for the Hungalus. The RTAC 2 uh, is made out of 5160 and has a Rockwell hardness of 54 to 56. So I would assume that the Hungless is probably right around there in that same ballpark, uh, maybe 55 to 57. You know, big blades, you kind of want a lower Rockwell hardness because the lower the Rockwell, the tougher the steel, you know, the tougher the, the knife. And then uh, depending on the heat treatment, obviously, will determine how well the edge holds. And uh, obviously, Essie has a great heat treatment. So uh, the edge is a very fine edge edge on the hunglist. Great for slicing through, you know, jungle, you know, kind of live living soft material as well as biting into wood and cutting through man-made materials. Razor sharp, just as sharp as any of their other knives, you know, be it an SE3 or an SE6 or any of the other ones. It has that same really wicked fine edge um, that's really nice and strong. The RTAC 2's edge is a little bit more uh, utility, you know, in other words, a little bit wider grind. So it's not razor hair popping sharp. Right now I could shave with this um, Hungalus, and we've done you know tons of use with both, and I couldn't quite do that with the RTAC, um, just because not not because the RTAC is dulled or anything. That's just how they were out of the box, and the RTAC just has a little bit wider grind angle, so that it will hold its edge for longer. That's why they did that. So um, you won't be able to maybe slice through man-made materials quite as easily, but uh, everything else it bites in just as deep as your Hungalus would. Out of all the chopping that we've done, all the different you know biting in of different stuff, you know the detailed work the carving. Um, you might get slightly finer shavings, you know, if you're shaving and carving wood, really detailed stuff with your Hungalish, you probably will get a little bit finer detail work uh, just because of the razor sharpness and the, the more aggressive grind angle on the Hungalus than you would with your RTAC 2, but both of them are holding their, their edges, their original factory edges the same. I haven't seen any dulling, chipping, or anything like that with either of these knives. Uh, also the spines, we'll talk about those real quick. The RTAC 2 right here has a 0 0.2 inch thick spine, and the Hungalus has a 0 0.8, excuse me, 0 0.188 inch thick spine. Uh, in other words, 3 16 and then this one's just over 3 16 So your RTAC 2 will be slightly, just a hair thicker than your Hungalus. Not a big deal there either. Didn't really see any difference with the batoning. They both baton exactly the same. You can obviously expand the same. Uh, some people, you know, ask me, okay, well, well, I've seen some videos on YouTube of uh, guys chunking out their RTAC 2. That is true. I've never seen a video of someone breaking or damaging their Hungalus with uh, use. I will say, going back to what I've said before, that Ontario is definitely doing a better job with their heat treatments and overall, um, you know, just work on their blades. I, and in recent years, I really haven't seen any issues at all with any of their stuff that they've done. Um, and I would trust it. And for the price point, again, of, you know, under 80, I mean, excuse me, under 100 bucks for the RTAC, uh, you know, I'm willing to, some people aren't, aren't, I'm willing to risk it. And I haven't seen any of that. And we've used uh, the RTAC 2 and the Hungalus in under um, freezing weather. I believe it was uh, 29 or 28 when we were filming some of the footage that you see uh, for both of these in their field testings. And I didn't see any chipping or you know damage to either of these while we were doing hard chopping and batoning with both these knives. So um, yes, you're gonna get a better, slightly better heat treatment, more fine uh, working edge with your Hungalus than your RTAC 2, but the RTAC 2 is a little bit more utilitarian and uh, stronger edge for that hard stuff. So I would say they work about the same, real no differences, bite in the same, baton the same with those edges that you get on both these knives. All right, so now that we've talked about the fit and finish on the two blades, let's go ahead and look at just the handles and their pros and cons. Uh, you can see that they're about the exact same length, but you can tell right away that the Hungalus is gonna have a more narrow, a slightly more ergonomic handle, whereas RTAC 2 is gonna have a kind of bigger, thicker handle. Those are some things you can notice right away. The micarta handle scales are both same amount of traction. They're both about the same thick uh, thickness. So on the back here, you have on the Hungalus a more squared off pommel right there. So uh, you can do a little bit better hammering, whereas the RTAC just has kind of a rounded pommel, exposed pommel back there. So um, not really good for anything except for maybe non-lethals. You could do some hammering kind of more on the back end over here, but uh, the Hungalus, you could definitely do some nailing in of nails if you had to. The Hungalus, uh, 
for those of you with small or medium sized hands, it's just gonna feel better in your hand right away, right out of the gate. It is gonna feel better. The deepness of this kind of groove back here is better than on the hung on the Artac 2. Just this Artac 2 is less aggressive. This one's a little deeper, so it keeps your hand from sliding around and flying around while you're chopping a little bit better, which is good. The Artac 2 has a little bit more of a kind of a belly or you know swell right here. So it's gonna fill out your hand a little bit more and fatigue your hand a little bit faster than if you're swinging around the hunglets. Not by much, and particularly if you wear large or extra large size gloves, you're really not going to notice that much difference between these two, um, except that this one will kind of stay in your hand a little bit longer without having to reset. Whereas this one, even though it has a pretty good hook here, a lot better than a lot of other knives, you know, it's way better than just having a straight hook off like that. I mean, no hook. Um, the the hunglets just has a deeper one, so it will stay in your hand a little bit better. The thing to note also is that the Artac 2 has that finger choil, which is really nice and I like that a lot. It makes it a lot easier to do some of your more detailed work that you might need to do with a large blade like this. I'm really, really glad that they give you that finger choil where they do not give you that and I don't know why. They didn't, you know, the, the SE Hungalus is the son or the, you know, the predecessor came after um, the Artac 2 and it just has a blank spot here not really big enough for your finger to do your detailed work and it's wider from here to here than it is from here to here of the finger choil so it's cramping your hand and just uncomfortable to do more close-up detailed work with the hunglet so that's something to consider um, you know it, it's a little bit thicker and a little bit wider the Artac 2 but that that finger choil really helps out a lot with your more detailed work whereas the hunglet really isn't as comfortable when you're doing that small car carving and cutting but other than that um, you kind of see it now uh, just depends on hand size and if you're just gonna be chopping and batoning doesn't really matter the you know hunglist is gonna do fine but if you are gonna be doing some carving and you know close-up detail work the Artac 2 will actually be a little bit more comfortable at doing that type of stuff all right, so let's go ahead and look at the sheath differences between the Artac 2 and the Hungalus. The Artac 2 has a nylon sheath. I'm just going to kind of go through the basics of these. I'm not going to go through all the details. You can watch the field test of the Artac 2 or the Hungalus to get the more uh, in-depth about the sheaths. Uh, but you get a nylon with the Artac 2 pocket in the front, molly along the back, nice big belt loop. Two retention points that are adjustable, so this can actually hold different styles of knives. You know, it just doesn't hold just the Artac 2. It can hold other models of knives, maybe from Topps Knives uh, or even Bussy, you know, Swamp Rat, some of those other companies. You can fit in there, the buttons pop off out of the way, knife slides easily out. Then for the Hungalus is amazing. It's a Kydex sheath, great, awesome, holds the knife really well, tons of lashing points. You got your retention screw that when it's down like this, makes it very easy for you to just push off and pull the knife out. Then you can pull it up and it locks into place and you cannot remove the knife out of the sheath. Then you got your pals webbing nylon paddle back here that you can web uh, it through Molly, as well as three retention points so it is jump compatible. Um, so obviously a much better high quality a sheath that you're getting with the Hungalus. That's not to say the Artac 2 sheath isn't good and you can actually use it for, with other knives that maybe either don't come with sheaths or just come with really crappy ones. This one's actually a very doable nylon sheath, but your Hungalus is definitely going to have a much better Kydex sheath. So it's just kind of up to you what you're looking at. Um, and again, I mean, this Kydex sheath is probably alone. I mean, just building that and making that probably worth 40, 50 bucks easy, whereas this nylon one, you know, is very cheap to manufacture. So there are the differences and similarities between the she's on the Hungalus and Artac 2. All right, everybody, I got to wrap up this versus video for us with an analogy. Uh, you know, your Hungalus is kind of like a Rolex watch. It's very classic, almost has that kind of handmade feel to it. Got a great sheath, you know, fit and finish is awesome on that thing, on that Hungalus, just like a Rolex timepiece would be. You know, it feels handmade, it's just awesome. But at the end of the day, what does a Rolex timepiece do? Gives you the time, gives you the date. And your Artac 2 is kind of like a Casio watch you pick up, you know, at any sporting goods store. Uh, you know, they're a you know, dime a dozen. They're not that difficult to find. Uh, you know, they're maybe a little clunkier on the edges. But guess what? At the end of the day, it tells time and gives you the date. And that's how I feel about these two blades. Uh, they both chop the same, baton the same. They both have good quality, you know, pieces about them. They're well designed, um, you know, and they're just really good items to carry on you, you know, in a, in a wilderness situation. And it just depends on, you know, do you want to have that really, you know, classic and if can you afford it you know that that rolex time piece of a knife basically um awesome great pick yourself up a hungalus it's going to be awesome last you a lifetime you know it, it is your price point you know 85 bucks 80 to 90 bucks um you know then pick up your 
our tack too. It's going to be do just the same stuff your hung list would. It's just not going to look as good doing it. So um, I hope that analogy kind of helps you guys out a little bit. Great knives. I would trust either one. Take either one into the wilderness. Uh, your hung list is obviously going to have a little bit better fit and finish, better sheath. Your Artac 2 is going to be a little rough around the edges, but they're both going to do the exact same amount of work for you, in my opinion. Um, you know, and be just as trustworthy. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, tell time and give you the date, just like a Casio watch would, or your Rolex timepiece. Just depends on your price point and uh, you know what type of person you are. So I hope this versus side by side has helped you out. I recommend that you check out our comments below and check out the links of these two knives in their field tests, and so you can see them in action. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.